a story about living your life the way you want. By looking at Darren's room and his morning routine, we can see how disciplined and focused he is on achieving his goals. His trophy for winning a relay race, an extracurricular activity. His achievement certificate in mathematics, a curricular activity. A poster on his room wall reminds him of his mantra which is to stay on track. The alarm on Darren's alarm chimes, and he wakes up with absolutely no yawn. This is a usual routine for him. He gets into his tracksuit, plugs in his earphones, and starts practicing for his race. He is listening to Big Sean's bounce back. He stops to dance to the rep. Here we get to see what he really enjoys doing. He races back to his house. His father, Xavier, is already waiting for him outside the house. He gives his pedometer to Xavier and takes a water bottle from him. Darren is 30 seconds slower than last day. Xavier asks him to run again. Xavier updates the chart he is maintaining to track Darren's progress. The chart shows the time Darren has taken in finishing his running and the time of his lagging. The calendar has reminders on it, reminders for submitting Harvard applications. There are medals hanging above the board. Everything seems to be planned and thoroughly thought out for Darren. Karen, Darren's friend from school, wishes to rap like Darren to win over all the girls. Sammy, their friend, comes running in excitement to tell them something. Before he can say something, Curran mocks him for drinking a smoothie even now when he is dieting. There starts the usual silly arguments between Curran and Sammy with innuendos and fat jokes. Finally, Sammy gets to the point he is here for. Big Sean is in Pittsburgh for a free concert tonight. Sammy shows Big Sean's tweet to make them believe. They are exhilarated to attend but then Darren remembers he must finish his application for Harvard tonight. Curran wants Darren to come with them. There is still a lot of time till the application due date anyways. Darren is anticipatedly looking at Xavier going through his finished college essay. Catherine, his mother, is sitting by him. Xavier says it is good, but there is a need for some improvements. Darren asks if he can look into these later. Xavier wonders if there can be something more important than this. Darren mentions the concert. Xavier doesn't let him go until Catherine steps in. Darren is allowed to go but with an instruction to be home by 11. They are heading towards the place of the concert, when Sammy and Curran say Darren can be like Big Sean, only if he starts taking his rapping talent seriously. Curran is thrilled to see so many girls in the crowd. He is here only for the girls after all. It is a full house. The guards ask them to leave. Darren leads both to the back of the building. They sneak through a wire fence, avoiding being seen by the security men passing by. Darren looks around to find a way to go inside. He sees a girl walking on a bridge up above. She must have found a way to get in. She is dressed in shorts and a hoodie. Her hair is dyed turquoise. Darren asks her if she is with the band. She asks him to go away. She calls him square, seeing him properly dressed and clearly looking like someone who doesn't throw caution to the wind, unlike her. Darren asks her to help them get inside. He points towards Curran, telling the girl that his friend has bad vision because of a head injury, and he needs to be standing somewhere higher to attend this concert. Curran starts playing along, going in circles blindly. The girl isn't buying any of it. She asks them to pay her 150 bucks to help them. Darren says they aren't that rich since they are helping their blind friend with his medication. She makes Darren look at his expensive shoes to tell he clearly isn't short on money. Darren offers to give her 60 bucks. She is about to agree but the guards come with flashing lights. They ask the boys and the girl to get out. The girl challenges the guards if they can really stop her from getting inside. Darren looks impressed with her attitude. A guard is already up on the bridge to catch the girl who starts running. A guard below flashes light at her. Darren reaches to turn away his flashlight to help the girl. The guard pushes Darren to the ground. Curran jumps on the guard to stall him. The guard throws him against the truck parked there. After that, he starts walking towards Sammy when Darren gets up and punches the guard in the face. Up on the bridge, the girl pauses her running to smile down at Darren doing the stunt. The guard, unaffected by the punch, grabs Darren by the collar. The girl throws a brick aiming for the guard's head, making him fall to the ground. They all dash for their lives when the guard manages to stand up to take hold of them. Darren yells after the girl for her name. Isabel, she answers. After reaching home, Darren is set to amend his college essay. He finishes and submits it finally. Then he logs into his social media accounts and starts hunting for Isabel. All in vain. But he finds her the next morning while doing his daily running. In a coffee shop. He asks Curran and Sammy to go inside with him. Sammy says this is the very shop he has been eating ice cream from and doesn't want to be reminded of him being fat once. Curran looks inside and sees Isabel. He knows Darren has come to like her. They are inside now. Sammy is trying hard to go for a smaller, less fatty cone. Curran makes fun of him for not being able to resist. Isabel is at the counter. She recognizes Darren. Curran orders cones. Sammy, while munching on a marshmallow, asks for whipped cream on his cone. Darren and Curran look at him annoyed for still having cravings of a fat boy. Darren pays for ice creams and is about to tip. Isabel stops him and says she has to sing whenever tipped. Darren wants to hear her sing. He goes on to tip. All the employees behind the counter start singing a song with claps and moves. Isabel rolls her eyes and sings along. When the singing is finished, Darren drops one more tip in the tipping box. The cafe servers gather to sing again. Isabel starts to leave, saying she is taking a break. 
Darren asks her to wait. He starts rapping. His lyrics are about him being sorry for annoying her, him wanting to go out with her, and her green eyes. Everybody in the cafe starts clapping for him. Curran and Sammy cheer for him. Isabel had stopped to listen to him rap. She seems to like it, but she hasn't agreed to go out with him. Darren says he will tip the cafe again and then she has to sing again. Isabel gives in and says he may walk her home after her off time. Darren calls it a date. She says it is no date. Darren is waiting outside the coffee shop for Isabel. He is reclining against his car and is in his dress shirt and pants. She sees his car and says he might get robbed of it in her area. She lives in Wilkinsburg. So, he leaves the car to walk with her. Darren compliments her hair to break the ice. She stays silent in response. He asks which school she goes to. She says she doesn't go to school. Isabel stops in her tracks. Darren touches her shoulder to check if she is okay. She asks him to let go of her, calling him square again. Right then, a trans person is getting out of a shop with a stolen soda. The shop owner yells behind them to give it back. It is Phil. They are punishing the shopkeeper for being transphobic. Phil waves to Isabel. Isabel introduces Darren to them as Square. Phil likes Darren's gentlemanly air. Phil hurls an innuendo at them and leaves after telling Isabel to find food in the fridge. They have reached at her house. He asks if she will go on a proper date with him. She says he isn't the type she would date. He says he is the type who can be decent, on time and can pay the bill. She chuckles and agrees to go out with him again but only once. Xavier announces they will be attending a gathering the coming weekend. James Maxwell will be there, he is a board member of Harvard. Darren has date with Isabel the same day. He tells Xavier that he already has some plans. Xavier reminds him, like always, about the importance of securing his future. Darren has made a reservation in a fancy restaurant for him and Isabel. Isabel says she doesn't fall for deluxe things. He tells her he really likes her. She asks him to drive to a place of her choice. It is an open-air restaurant. Darren doesn't seem to like its food. He thinks it is gross. She asks him to try it at least. He says he will try it only if she tells him why she doesn't go to school. She says it isn't important to her. Darren says she needs school for her good future, a good college and all. He tells her how he and his father have this all planned out for him. On Isabel mentioning his great rapping, he says he isn't going to pursue rapping. Isabel argues that he is too good at it to not do it. Darren says he doesn't have a place for it to fit into his tight schedule. She says his schedule is pointless if it isn't something he wants. Darren thinks his aims don't necessarily have to be of his liking. An aim should rather be practical to struggle for. She keeps on mocking him and his thoughts on how important it is to plan and battle for a better future. Her question is why can't a person spend his life his way? His answer is that living a life on your terms can lead to nowhere. Isabel thinks it isn't about reaching somewhere with living the life one wants. It is about being true to yourself by doing exactly what one wants. She doesn't go to school because she doesn't want to. It is as simple as that for her. She asks Darren to take a bite of his food as promised. He hesitantly does, and to his surprise, it tastes delicious. She asks him what he really wants. He has told his parents' expectations of him. Now he has to tell what he wants for himself. Darren pauses for a moment and says he wants to go out with her again. Isabel looks at him and smiles. His parents are already at the event. Xavier is assuring Mr. James Maxwell that Darren is a responsible kid and will be here soon. Darren finally manages to reach it in time. In haste, he bumps into a waiter. His parents are embarrassed. His father whispers to him not to let him down like this again. Darren spends the following summer holidays hanging out with Isabel. They go to the movies. The fun Darren probably never had before. They would listen to rap together. At the end of every hangout, Darren would walk her home, and before leaving, he would ask her for another day together. She would say yes. He would be there every evening to walk her home from her workplace. He tries to be intimate with her, but she would step away every time. Tonight, it will be Isabel asking him for another hangout. Xavier has seen him and Isabel together. He inquires Darren about it and asks him to stay focused. One has to give up a lot to attain one's goals. That is the rule of success. He says a girl like Isabel is a bad influence for him. Darren meets Isabel anyway. He walks her home again. Isabel tells him that Phil was her babysitter. He brought her up when her mother abandoned her at the age of six. She doesn't know anything about her father. Darren asks her if she can let her in her house as he needs some water. She says okay but he better stay clear of her. It is the first time Darren sees the insides of her place. She has posted a lot of postcards of beaches on her wall. He is about to go through her stuff when she yells from the kitchen not to touch anything of hers. She brings him a glass of water. She sits beside him on her bed. He asks her about the postcards. She says she wants to see the beach and the ocean, but she can't afford to visit. So, all she has is postcards. Darren says he can take her to a beach. She leans in and their lips meet. Suddenly Isabel breaks away. Darren asks her what is wrong. She says they shouldn't be getting intimate. Darren is confused. He says they are dating each other so it is normal to be intimate. Isabel says they are only spending time together. It is nothing more than that. Darren insists that it is dating. He asks if she fancies someone else and if she even likes him. To end the argument, she says she doesn't like him. Darren says he loves her. She sighs and turns around to walk out of the room. Darren goes after her, yelling that he is crazy about her. 
She occupies his mind most of the time. Isabel tries to shush him and make him leave. Seeing him not give up, she pulls off her wig to reveal her bald head. Darren backs a step. She suffers from ovarian cancer and has only a year to live. She cries helplessly and shoves Darren out. Darren is forlorn, sitting with his friends on the roof of a building. Curran suggests he scream to let out his pain. Three of them start screaming their complaints about the universe being unfair. The other two have gone silent, while Curran is still going on and on about him never getting a girl, despite his desire and efforts. Sammy makes fun of Curran. Darren sits to watch Curran and Sammy squabble. There is no response from Harvard yet. Xavier comforts himself and Darren, saying all precious things are worthy of this much effort. One needs proper planning to swim through life smoothly. Something clicks in Darren. He runs off to see Isabel. Isabel is worth his efforts and love. Though it isn't easy, he can manage with a plan. Phil is on the stairs and sees Darren at Isabel's door with flowers in his hands. He knocks at the door. Isabel opens it and, upon seeing Darren, slams it shut. Darren tells her to listen to her. He loves her and he doesn't care if he has only one year to be with her. He says he has the plan to swim through this one year together. They will be done doing everything they want before this year ends. From the other side of the door, Isabel says she doesn't believe in happy endings and fairy tales of this kind. Darren says all she has to do is trust him on this. Isabel opens the door. She says she will agree to this crazy idea of his, only if he stops saying I love you. She doesn't believe in love. Darren pulls her closer and they have a moment together. Phil is in tears of joy. Darren has laid out the plan for the entire year. The first milestone is to buy a house. After all, they are going to live an entire life in a year. Darren and Isabel are dressed in hip-hop rich people's looks, standing amid the crowd for an open house. They fake a British accent when the real estate agent asks them who they are. He asks them to run along. Isabel says he doesn't know who he is talking to. She goes on to say Darren is a famous rapper. She nudges Darren to prove it to the agent. Darren freezes. Seeing their cover blown, they take off. The next milestone is to celebrate all the previous birthdays Isabel had. Phil and Darren bake a cake for each birthday. Isabel blows candles on all of them. The cakes taste bad though. The next one is to have a graduation ceremony. Darren and Isabella throw the hat in the air while they are dressed in graduation gowns. They bake together. Darren takes her to the hospital for her chemotherapy. A lot is getting off the bucket list. To donate to a charity, to sail a boat. Now they have a pet together which is a fish. They can't get to agree on a name for it. Isabel says it doesn't matter because it is going to pass away in no time, here in Wilkinsburg. Isabel takes Darren to Ron's. She introduces them to each other. Ron looks at the fish bag in Darren's hand and informs him that the fish is gone. Isabel was right. Ron takes Isabel and Darren in. Darren is surprised to see rap beats inside. He thinks it is cool. Ron thanks him for his compliment and asks him to go inside the recording room to rap. Darren says he can't do it, and he isn't here for that. Isabel pushes him into the sound booth. Ron starts playing rap beats for him and asks him to rap as soon as the beat drops. Darren doesn't seem to understand the jargon. Isabel face bombs. She cues Darren to wear the headset. He obeys. He is too nervous to do anything. Isabel asks him to just be himself. Darren gains energy from that. Be yourself, he repeats to himself. Ron hits it and Darren starts rapping. And it is nothing like what Isabel had told Ron of Darren's rapping. Ron looks at Isabel questioningly. Isabel gets up and asks Darren about the trash lyrics he is uttering. Darren says he doesn't want to be here in the first place. Isabel argues that it is exactly the place he wants to be in. Ron gets up to go for a drink. Isabel orders him to remain seated and yells at Darren to rap properly. She wonders if this has been part of his plan for this year. Darren says it is not. Isabel mocks him for wanting to go to Harvard. She says it is what his dad wants, not what he wants. Darren finds it hard to do what he actually wants. She grabs the fish bag, apologizes to Ron, and leaves. Darren shouts after her. He says she knows nothing about his life, about the responsibility he has, and about his daily routine. In the mid of his speech, his words start rhyming, and he starts rapping just like that. Isabel re-enters on hearing him rap the way he should. She asks Ron to play rap beats. Ron is impressed. Darren is rapping his heart out. His lyrics are real this time. Isabel is dancing to the tune and does drum beats. Darren is getting BS on his tests, but he seems to ace rapping with Ron. His father is working on the plan he has for Darren, the plan to get him into Harvard. Darren is working on a plan too, a plan to live his life his way. Darren has his first rap song recorded. Ron hands him the CD of it. He looks proud of himself while listening to his own song. Today he is going to propose to Isabel. This is the next milestone. Darren takes Isabel on a boat ride. He rows the boat to the middle of the lake, takes out the ring and asks her to marry him. Isabel asks if this is a real proposal. She says she'd rather stick to pretending than get married for real. Her health doesn't allow her to have a wedding, honeymoon, kids, or anything that marriage is about. Darren receives a letter from Harvard. He is on the waiting list. He is devastated. He brings Isabel from the hospital and tucks her into bed. She tells him that the beach postcards are from her mother. She has been sending them one on each occasion since she left. 
Darin tells Isabel that his parents want to meet her. It is Christmas Eve. Isabel and Phil are here to dine with Darin and his family. Isabel got a present for Darin. They all are having a cheerful conversation. Catherine tells Phil that she and Xavier are originally from Wilkinsburg. They struggle together to have a better life today. Xavier is more interested in talking about the bad times he had in Wilkinsburg and how much he had to go through. He says it is only the hard work and sacrifice that helped him get out of there. Phil and Catherine try to keep the conversation lighter. Xavier asks Isabel about school. Darren immediately answers for her. She is homeschooled, he says. Isabel squints at him. Xavier goes on to ask her about her college plans. She says she hasn't thought about it yet. Xavier sarcastically says that college isn't for everybody. Isabel thinks the world needs more artists than college graduates. Xavier doesn't stop. He insults her for being an obstacle to his son's progress. He calls Phil stupid. Catherine tries to calm Xavier. Amid the chaos in his father's speech about the importance of college, Darren breaks the news of getting waitlisted for Harvard. Xavier says to Isabel that she is the reason it has happened. Phil leaves, taking Isabel with them. Catherine is apologetic to them. Darren is left alone at the table, his head hanging low, for several days to come. Xavier has arranged Darren's meeting with James Maxwell, who might be of help with the college application. Mr. James sees Darren's documents and says he is more interested in knowing who he is than his academic scores. Darren starts to tell his athletic record but stops when he remembers Isabel mocking him when he told her the same achievements. He excuses himself and leaves. Upon reaching home, Xavier scolds him for being selfish and for ruining his chances. Darren says this all is Xavier's dream, not his. He never cared to know Darren's dream. Darren pulls down the board with the plan, calendar and medals. He stomps on it. Xavier pins him to the sofa and is about to hit him when Catherine intervenes. She says she will not support Xavier anymore. She goes after Darren. Darren is outside Isabel's. He tells her to be with him for real. There will be no plan, no imitating life. They will live a real life together. She comes down to hug him. They get in a car and drive out of Pittsburgh with no plan. Isabel sticks her head out of the sunroof and feels the wind. They share romantic moments. Darren robs a convenience store and drives away while the shopkeeper chases them with a bat. Isabel is happy and surprised at Darren. They take rides on merry-go-rounds and play in the open fields. Darren jots down songs in a notebook that Isabel had gifted him on Christmas Eve. He ignores his mom's calls. They are in Philadelphia, roaming around. They sit on a sidewalk. Darren starts rapping and Isabel beatboxes. A passerby drops them money. Isabel finds a baby hedgehog and names it Square after Darren. Big Sean is performing in Philadelphia tonight. Darren and Isabel go to attend it finally. They are dancing and sharing intimate moments. Isabel sees a guard at the entrance to the stage. It is the same guard she hit with the brick in the last concert. She places the hedgehog in Darren's hands and takes out his song CD. She asks him to get this CD to Big Sean and meet her in the car. She then waves to draw the guard's attention toward her. He recognizes her and runs after her. Darren sees the unguarded entrance and goes near the stage. Big Sean comes down the stage. Darren is starstruck. Big Sean looks at the hedgehog in Darren's hands and asks a fan to take a photo of him with Darren holding the hedgehog. Darren is about to give the CD to Big Sean, but the guard comes back and Darren has to sneak away. Darren lies to Isabel that he did manage to give his song CD to Big Sean. Isabel had seen him not being able to do so. She knows Darren is lying. She says nothing but weeps silently with her head turned away while Darren drives. Darren somehow found out Amanda's, Isabel's mother, address. He drives Isabel to meet her without telling anything to Isabel. Darren stops his car near Amanda's house. Amanda is outside taking stuff out of her car. Isabel is mad at Darren for bringing her there. She says she wouldn't meet her mother. Darren makes her come around. Isabel gets out of the car and walks towards her mother. Amanda looks at her and recognizes her. She asks Isabel what she is doing here. Amanda clearly doesn't seem happy to see Isabel. Isabel sees a little girl at the house door and hears a man calling for Amanda from the inside. Apparently, it is her mother's new family. Isabel, feeling dejected and unwanted, runs back to the car. Darren starts driving away. He wants to say something, but Isabel asks him to be silent. She complains about him being like everybody for lying to her. She tells him she knows he didn't give the CD to Big Sean. She fights Darren to stop the car and let her out. The car gets derailed and goes into the woods. She gets out of the car. Darren runs after her, telling her that he was too scared to give the CD to Big Sean. He wasn't sure if he would like his song or not. Isabel asks what is so bad in her that her own mother preferred raising another kid but not her. Isabel faints. She is in her room when she wakes up. She tears down all the beach postcards. She looks like she is in a lot of pain. She overhears the doctor talking to Phil and Darren in the next room. Her cancer has spread further in her body. She has been bearing a lot of pain all this time without showing it. 
Now Darren is all set for his new plan, a plan to manage Isabel's pain, her medication schedule, and her care. He has Curran and Sammy assist him in this. They are cleaning her place, running errands, doing groceries, and going to the pharmacy. Darren makes pancakes for her to eat before taking medicine. She throws them away. He goes to make more. His persistence makes her smile. To Darren's joy, Catherine has come to take care of Isabel. Darren is back at Ron's, making another song. Isabel starts vomiting blood. Darren has brought her to the hospital. His friends, his mom and Phil are there too. The doctor says she is okay now. It happened because of her worsening cancer. All that can be done is to adjust her medication. Her disease is too advanced to do anything more than that. Her life now is a matter of a few weeks only. Darren is ridden with sorrow. He is in denial. He starts beating at the wall, throwing things in the hospital, and crying in pain. Catherine holds him and tells him he did everything he could for her. He needs to accept the truth. He weeps in his mother's arms. Darren is cleaning while Isabel rests in her bed. The door knocks. Amanda has come to visit Isabel. She looks at the beach postcards that Isabel has been keeping all these years. They both hug each other. Amanda tells her that she couldn't come back to her because of her new family. Xavier is in Darren's room. He sees a CD there and plays it. He smiles listening to it. He looks proud. He starts weeping with his head in his hands. Darren is asleep. Isabel sees a CD in Darren's backpack. It is his new recording. She listens to it. She weeps and looks lovingly at a sleeping Darren. She asks Phil for a favor. She arranges a wedding ceremony in a drag queen's club. It will be a surprise for Darren. She will marry Darren. Darren is tricked to come into the club. Curran and Sammy put a tuxedo on him. He is in disbelief. Ron is acting as a minister. Phil and Catherine are there too. The hedgehog, who is named Square Jr., comes running with a ring box on him. It had the same ring Darren had when he proposed to Isabel on the boat. But he threw it away after she said no. Isabel had Curran and Sammy find it somehow and clean it for today. Then comes the bride, Isabel, dressed in white. She is in a wheelchair with Phil behind her. Darren knows she is doing all this for him. Ron pronounces them husband and wife. Isabel's breathing is unstable. Darren holds her. She tells him that he has given her a happy ending. This is their last milestone. She takes her last breath after professing her love for him. Xavier comes to sit beside Darren at the funeral and says his condolences. Darren hugs him. The same day is Darren's graduation which he has missed. Sammy is accepted into a college and is working out to stay slim, despite the other's doubts. Some girl has finally shown interest in Curran. And Darren is going to go to New York to make music. His parents gifted him a journal and their best wishes. He has Square Jr. in the passenger seat. Darren is driving to New York when he listens to a message by Isabel on the radio. Her message is on living life your way even if it isn't easy. The reward of living it your way is to have your life as truly yours. Her reward was love from Darren. Then the channel plays Darren's song on her already made request. The song is about the life he got to spend with her in just a year.